This is Past Force. If I were to mention the most evil men in history, who would you think of? Hitler, Stalin, Elmo, Putin, Richard III, his best mate Ralph Ashton, and his inexplicable hatred of marigold flowers. You wouldn't think of Oscar Wilde, would you? You wouldn't think of playwright, the guy who wrote the picture of Dorian Gray, the importance of being earnest, a handbag, a woman of no importance, Lady Windermere's fan, the Canterville ghost. You wouldn't think of Oscar Wilde when you think of evil men. Yet, that's what his former lover, Alfred Douglas, better known as Bosey, called him in 1916. He said that Wilde was one of the most powerful forces for evil in Europe in the last 300 years. Like, the French Revolution never happened, did it? Robespierre wasn't a thing. The guillotine never existed. There was no reign of terror in France in the 1790s. Can you tell I'm being sarcastic? This is unfair on Wilde because Douglas is the man who is at least partially responsible for Wilde's downfall. It was their toxic, tempestuous relationship that caused Wilde to lose everything. In 1895, Oscar Fingal O'Flaherty Wills Wilde was the most famous writer, or one of the most famous writers, in the world. 1890, he'd published The Picture of Dorian Gray. Still famous, still massively successful, influential gothic novel to this day. He had just premiered the importance of being earnest to rave reviews. A handbag! Apart from the Marquis of Queensbury, Alfred Douglas's father, who hated Wilde, so he was going to turn up at the premiere and throw rotten vegetables. Oscar Wilde got wind of this, barred him from the theatre. Although it would have been funny if he'd turned up at the theatre with his rotten vegetables in a handbag. A handbag! Yet, by the summer of 1895, Oscar Wilde had begun the greatest downfall of any writer anywhere at any time. And it was all thanks to his tempestuous relationship with Douglas, Douglas's father, the Marquis of Queensbury, who goaded him into a libel trial, leaving a card at his club calling him a posing sodomite. It was partially Wilde's fault as well because he was so open about his homosexuality. Ernest, for instance, the importance of being earnest. A handbag! Ernest is Victorian slang for a gay man. The picture of Dorian Gray had to be censored when it was first published. Wilde was openly flamboyant and excessive. But, here's the question. Did the law make an example out of Oscar Wilde? Did they use him because he was so famous to say homosexuality, illegal, this is what's going to happen to you if you are. Did they use him as an example? To begin with, there is a rumour regarding this, regarding the Marquis of Queensbury pushing the government to ensure that Wilde got the maximum sentence possible. And this is because of Wilde's... And this is because of... Queensbury's eldest son, Francis, who had died in 
suspicious circumstances and was rumoured to be having an affair with the Prime Minister, the Earl of Rosebery. Whether that's true or not, there's very little evidence about it. It's rumour, it's speculation. But Wilde did get the maximum sentence possible, which in 1895, for gross indecency, what he was tried for, was two years hard labour and imprisonment. The judge at his second trial, his first trial had resulted in a hung jury. The judge, Mr Justice Wills, said that this was one of the worst cases he had ever tried and that even the maximum sentence, two years hard labour, was not enough for Wilde's crimes. So the judge was definitely biased against him. The judge was determined, based on the evidence, to give Wilde the maximum sentence possible, to make an example out of him. But what about other gross indecency cases, other cases of homosexuals who were tried under the law in the 19th century? Well, up until 1861, it was the death penalty. Homosexuals, those who were caught, those who were tried, got, or the maximum sentence at the time was the death penalty. After 1861, two years hard labour and imprisonment. So what about other cases? What did they get? Well, in 1853, Edward Fentiman and Joseph Pitymy, 17 year olds, a pair of horny teenagers, were tried at the Old Bailey. And this is when the death penalty was still in place, remember. They got one year in prison each. Thomas Manuel of Wrexham in 1865 who was accused of attempted sodomy, he got 18 months hard labour. Frederick Reynolds and Henry Richard Metz, in 1904, post Wild, they only got six months hard labour. And one that I didn't write a date down for some reason, Thomas Walker and Joseph Barnes, Two months hard labour. And then in 1880, the North Wales Weekly Mail reports on a trial in Manchester regarding a homoerotic masquerade ball in which 47 men were arrested. What is their punishment, I hear you ask? A £25 fine each, plus probably a few days in prison as well. So, what it seems like is that Wilde got the maximum sentence, the harshest sentence possible, whilst others got still harsh but lesser sentences. It seems like, based on this evidence, that Wilde was made an example of. And if they did make an example of it, it's made even more profound by the fact that after his imprisonment, after his trial, Wilde lost everything. He lost the rights to his plays, he had to sell them, he was bankrupt. He had to flee abroad, first to Naples and then to Paris, and the duel to the death with his wallpaper. His reputation was tarnished for the foreseeable future. It did recover, but 
Victorian society, the importance of being earnest was the performances, all performances of his plays were suspense, suspended, cancelled. He lost everything. And it's hard to think that those other men who were tried, the 47 in Manchester, Thomas Manuel, Joseph Pitymney, Richard Fentiman, or Edward Fentiman rather, it's hard to think, hard to imagine that they lost as much as Wilde did. And I hardly doubt that their former lover, 20 years later, was calling them the most evil man in Europe. History! It's a hand bear!